All right. Hello and welcome everyone to our office hours webinar for Brain HQ. We're so glad that you could be joining us today. My name is Stephanie and I'm a member of our customer delight team. I am going to be one of your co-hosts for today. Now, our goal for the office hours webinar series is to show off a specific feature or two, and then we'll open the floor and answer any questions that you might have about those features. Now, today's topic is a bit of a deep dive into the personal trainer within Brain HQ. So I'll go ahead and walk you through uh, the different features of the personal trainer. And then after that, we'll pivot to taking questions from the audience. So if at any point during the presentation you have a question about the personal trainer, uh, go ahead and click the Q&A button on the Zoom control panel and a window should pop up where you can type in your questions. Now there are a lot more of you than there are me and Henry, um, so we aren't going to be able to answer every question today, but fear not, you can always email our support team, support at brainhq.com, if we don't get a chance to answer your question live. Now. Uh, as for other questions that you might have, we do also have a support site, which you can find at support.brainhq.com. Uh, that support site has answers to many common questions uh, asked by all of our, all different kinds of our users. Um, so it is a wonderful resource and I would encourage you all to check that out. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to note is that today's webinar is being recorded and it will get posted to our YouTube channel. So, um, if you want to be notified when that video goes live, you can head on over to youtube.com slash brainhq in order to subscribe and receive a notification when that video is up. All right, um, so a little bit about me. Uh, before working at Posit Science, I was a science communicator and docent at a science museum here in San Francisco. In 2014, I started working for Posit Science as a customer delight specialist. And I wear quite a few more hats now than I did when I first started nearly 10 years ago, um, but I'm still answering questions from users like you all pretty regularly. Now, my co-host today is Dr. Henry Maka. Henry, you want to say hi? Hey, folks. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and thanks for organizing and hosting all this, Stephanie. Yeah, of course. Uh, now, for those of you unfamiliar with Henry, uh, he is our CEO here at Posit Science. Uh, he earned his PhD in neuroscience at the University of California, San Francisco, where he studied brain plasticity with our co-founder, Dr. Michael Merzenich. Uh, so he and I are going to be sort of tag teaming the demo and also tag teaming any questions that you might have after the demo today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and pivot over to my demonstration window here. All right, so a common question that we often get asked in customer support is, hey, uh, can I talk to the personal trainer? I have questions about uh, what kinds of exercises they are uh, assigning to me and putting in my schedule. Uh, so the answer is no, we can't <laughs> hook you up with, uh, with the personal trainer specifically because the personal trainer isn't actually a person. Uh, the, the personal trainer is a feature built into Brain HQ that is designed to pick out exercises and levels within those exercises uh, each time you sit down to do your training. So ideally, the you know idea behind it is that it takes the guesswork out of training. You don't have to handpick your exercises and levels. The personal trainer is automatically going to do that for you. Now, whenever you log into Brain HQ, the personal trainer is going to look at your entire brain training history. So that includes your performance on every level of every exercise across every platform that you've completed. And then based on that data, Brain HQ will then select an active set of exercises and levels from those exercises that are going to be the optimal ones it thinks that you should be working on to experience the largest performance improvements. So each time you train, the personal trainer is either going to pick new levels for you to train on, um, or it will ask you to repeat levels that it thinks that it, you can uh, stand to improve a little bit more on. So as you continue training, it will retire certain exercises and then add new ones to meet your brain's needs. All right, so another question that we often get is how do I get to the personal trainer? Uh, well, thankfully it's pretty easy. If you are on the web or on mobile, it's gonna be a similar situation. Once you're logged into Brain HQ, uh, there's gonna be a big button that you can tap that says use personal trainer below it. You click on that and the personal trainer will go ahead and build up a schedule for you. 
Now the schedule reads almost a little backwards. Think of it, uh, think of these icons as sort of like a tape that gets fed into this giant start button off to the right here. So uh, the schedule that it has for us starts with sound sweeps. And then once we complete sound sweeps, it'll go to visual sweeps, target tracker, so on and so forth. Now, I can also see from this uh, schedule of exercises that it is programming a lot of attention and brain speed exercises for me. And I know that because all of the exercises are going to be color coded within Brain HQ. So I know that attention exercises are going to be color coded green, and then the uh, brain speed exercises are going to be color coded blue. Uh, Henry, do you think maybe you could speak to why the personal trainer is picking out mostly attention and brain speed exercises on this? kind of new account? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, of course, people on this call may know that Brain HQ has got dozens of exercises across all kinds of cognitive domains. Why is it focusing on attention and speed to start with? And the answer for that is, hey, at the science side, we consider speed of processing and attention to just be like foundational building blocks of brain health. If you're going to do anything with your brain, you're going to need to be able to pay attention pretty well, and you're going to need to be able to process information reasonably quickly. So that's why we start off with these kinds of uh, exercises, as you say, on a new account, um, uh, because they kind of set the stage, they build up underlying brain health so that a brain can tackle more complex, more advanced exercises um, in later days as you get to them. Yeah, absolutely. And not only are brain speed and attention really foundational to cognition, it's also these exercises are uh, what we have found to be generally kind of easier for new users to start understanding if maybe you are uh, new to this kind of contextual program and um, or this training program and you don't have a whole lot of context for, you know, how multimedia works uh, or interactive media works. So um, these exercises are sort of uh, happily geared towards new users so that way you get a feel for the program before we move you on to more advanced exercises. That's a perfect description as well. And, you know, one thing also I like to call out, Stephanie, as we looked at this, is like you say, it's showing you all those exercises. They're kind of like a tape that feeds into that spark button. But you don't necessarily have to do every single exercise on this page today. Do you mind going back to the Brain HQ screen for just a moment? Sure. Maybe? You know, as you'll see at the top here, it says complete 12 levels before Sunday. So that's your goal for the week. Just train 12 levels over the course between now and Sunday. And so when you click on that personal trainer button, if you don't mind clicking there again, you know, 12 levels, you're probably just going to be doing the really the first few exercises here. And the rest are just give you sort of a, a hint of what's to come. Um, so that uh, I want to mention that just because I think sometimes people see this, and they're like, well, that seems like a lot for today. But in fact, you will do you'll do probably the ones on the right. And that's going to get you to your goal for the day or for the whole week. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing too is sometimes we'll get questions about um, the order in which the exercises are uh, sort of fed into the schedule. Uh, just because sound sweeps, here's the secret, just because sound sweeps is in that start button doesn't mean that I need to start with sound sweeps. <laughs> I can actually click on any of these icons and load the load that exercise up first instead. Um, so sometimes we'll have people saying, hey, I'm getting this one exercise at the beginning every day. Um, and we, you know, can say, Hey, we can either take that out of the personal trainer schedule for you, or if you want to keep it in, but just don't want to start with it, click another exercise and then come back to it. That's a okay too. All right. So, uh, here we can see the exercises that have been picked for us. Like we said, they are mostly attention and brain speed exercises. And if you kind of look closely here, um, and if your screen is wide enough, you'll see that this uh, these exercises actually sort of repeat. So we have sound sweeps, visual sweeps, a couple more, and then we come back down, we have sound sweeps and then visual sweeps again. Um, so these exercises here are, are part a, a part of what the personal trainer is calling its active set of exercises. Uh, now the a uh, personal trainer is going to queue up this first level for you, this first exercise for you, and then pick a level from this exercise that it thinks is going to be good for your brain. So it may be a level that it wants you to repeat, or it might be a new level entirely. So looking at my schedule here, I can see that these are all going to be new levels for me. And I can tell because under each of the exercise names, it'll say sixth level, eighth level, uh, you know, some sort of numer numeral and then level. If it were a repeated level, if it was a level that the personal trainer wanted me to go back and train with again, uh, instead of saying fifth level or sixth level, it would instead say repeated level. 
So sometimes people are worried that when they see a bunch of repeated levels in the personal trainer that they aren't maybe making progress. And that's not the case. That's another thing that I want to bring to your attention. Um, you know, if you are seeing repeated level, then that means that you're actually probably at a training level that is appropriate for your brain. Um, so Henry, do you want to speak to that maybe a little bit? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, training your brain is like any kind of learning or practice that you do. And what Brain HQ is doing kind of under the hood, and we'll talk about this more in a moment, is, you know, wants to get your brain to a certain level of performance on each level of each exercise. And so lots of times, I mean, this happens to me, I'm sure it happens to you, Stephanie, it happens to every exercise, every person, it's a normal part of Brain HQ training. I'll do the level for the first time. And, um, and uh, hey, exactly like you were saying, Brain HQ will say, hey, uh, you know, that's good, but you can probably do better. So I'm going to bring you back and I'm going to give you more chance to practice on that. So it's just like anything else you might practice, Brain HQ brings it back so you can practice it more and get better at it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's talk about um, sort of what the goal is when you're training with a level. Um, so when you are training with a level, the personal trainer wants you to cumulatively earn 10 stars on that given level. Um, so when you first train with a level, you're going to earn a certain number of stars, somewhere between one and five, and set your baseline score. And then you are going to be asked to replay that level until you earn a total of 10 stars, or if you replay it five times, whichever comes first. Now, each time you replay a level, that's also going to count towards your weekly goal and your total number of levels completed. So like Henry was saying, because my weekly goal in this account is only 12 levels, I'm really only probably going to go through maybe one or two of these levels here and then just have to repeat them a couple of times each. Now, when you've either reached 10 stars or five replays, you're going to see a completion screen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my slides here. I had completed a session earlier uh, on this account and uh, rather than going through a whole session again, I just wanted to share uh, the screenshot or the screen grab from that. So when you complete um, that goal of either getting 10 stars or five replays, you're going to get a screen similar to this. So this little uh, sort of outside um, border is going to start to fill in, sort of indicating what your progress is for that particular training session. Um, you're going to see how many stars you've earned. Um, and if you overshoot 10 stars, that's A-OK. -okay. That actually happens a lot. Um, so no worries there. It looks like it took me uh, three tries to get past 10 stars. Um, and then uh, that also indicates to me that I've completed three of the eight levels that the personal trainer wanted me to uh, complete for that session. Now, uh, let's say I go ahead and continue training. Once I'm done here, oh, I click on that. Jump in here for one quick moment. Oh, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and again, just to emphasize what Stephanie and I were talking about earlier, you know, what, why did you do it three times today to get to those 10 stars? And again, that's because brain training is about practice. So the personal trainer kind of saw how you were doing and said, hey, I want you to, to do this level. I want you to repeat it three times a day. That's, uh, that's going to be enough training for this to start to sink into your brain, to start to rewire your brain in those helpful ways. And then after that, hey, the Brain HQ, the personal trainer looks at you and looks at the level and says, okay, you're ready for the next level at this point. So again, think about it like, um, you know, if you had a, you were going to the gym, right? You might have a personal trainer who says, uh, okay, you lifted this much weight and I want you to lift it again. And okay, that's enough for you. I'm ready for you to move on. That's exactly what's going on kind of underneath the scenes here when Brain HQ is asking, you know, to repeat those levels. It's because we want that learning to sink in and, and really help your brain. Yeah, exactly. So if I were to continue training in that session and I went ahead and completed the next uh, level, got my 10 stars, it looks like I did pretty good. It looks like I had trained with visual sweeps and uh, it only took me two tries to get to 10 stars. So that was a five star performance each time. A little pat on the back for myself. Uh, let's uh, continue on, uh, see if we can uh, finish that session here. So the star count keeps going up. It looks like I did a, another level. Uh, and it looks like it took me three tries that time. So I got a total of 14 stars, which is okay to overshoot. And we can see that I have completed the eight levels that the personal trainer wanted me to complete for that session. Uh, and we can see that outside border continues to fill up. 
Now, what happens when I am done with the session and I've reached those eight levels? You get a little session complete screen. Uh, so it's going to tell you how many levels you've passed, how many moments you've acquired. Uh, moments can be things like uh, when you were in the top percentile of a level or if you've trained with a level a certain number of times. It wants to congratulate you and uh, make a moment out of that. It also tells you how many stars you earned in that session and how many levels you've completed towards your weekly goal. Now, the personal trainer is going to go ahead and assume that um, you are going to be training three times a week. And by default, the personal trainer wants you to complete 24 levels per week. So 24 levels a week, uh, three times a week, uh, sorry, 24 levels per week, uh, three sessions per week. It's doing the math on that and it's figuring you're going to want to shoot for roughly eight levels per session. So let's go ahead and say uh, I've gone ahead and done another session. So this would have been the second session for the week. So we can see those levels are uh, piling up. Those moments are being added. I'm now at 18 out of 24 levels uh, for that weekly goal. Let's say uh, the third day I come back, do one more session. And then we get a session complete screen similar to this, where it tells me that my weekly goal has been reached. Um, so uh, that is a really great, wonderful way to sort of track your progress within the personal trainer uh, throughout the week as well. All okay. right, let me switch back to and the I'll just demo one more thing. It's one nice yeah. reason to use the personal trainer because it can really help you just guide yourself to how much training am I supposed to do this week. And hey, brain training more is always better, but also people have busy lives and they're doing lots of things besides doing Brain HQ. And using the brain training, uh, the personal trainer in that way can help you make sure, hey, you're doing enough Brain HQ training to be helpful, uh, but also give you that nice feeling of, hey, when I'm finished for the week, I'm finished for the week. And I can go on and do all the other exciting things I have to do in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So let's also briefly touch on... Um, returning and retiring levels and exercises within the personal trainer. Um, so most of you probably know this, but there are 29 different exercises within Brain HQ, And then each of those exercises is broken down into smaller configurations, which we call levels. Um, so whenever you complete a level, the personal trainer decides if it should return it to you again, uh, or if it should instead retire that level. So a level is going to be returned to your schedule if you didn't quite reach your performance target. Um, by default, the personal trainer wants you to get at least three stars on a level to show that you're ready for the next one. Um, but if you haven't scored high enough, that means that the exercise is challenging, which is good for your brain. So that's A-OK. -okay. Um, now, a level can be retired when you've reached or exceeded your performance target for that level. So say your default uh, star target is uh, going to be three stars and you get four or five stars. Personal trainer doesn't want you to sit back on that level because you're not getting as much benefit from it. You're not challenging your brain quite as much. Um, so that level will get retired and then it'll graduate you up to a higher level after that. Now, an exercise itself can also be retired uh, when you have retired a certain number of levels within that exercise. Uh, so by default, if you complete 10 levels of say Hawkeye, uh, then Hawkeye is going to be retired from the personal trainer for a little bit and it'll get swapped out for a different exercise. So sort of taking a step back and doing sort of a big picture snapshot here. Um, so each personal trainer session, you're going to have six exercises in your active set. The personal trainer is then going to pick a level from each exercise. It might be a repeated level or it might be a new level. And then after you retire 10 levels in an exercise, the personal trainer will then retire that exercise and then swap it out for a different one. All right. Now, well, one of other... there as well, Stephanie, and say, yeah, hey, the all that's going on is because, hey, there's a lot of brain training in Brain HQ. There's dozens of brain training exercises. Each exercise has, you know, tens and if not, you know, dozens and dozens of levels. And, you know, the personal trainer wants to work you through them in a logical way. So it has this kind of underlying smart algorithms about sort of seeing how you're doing and getting rid of levels, as Stephanie said, where, hey, if you've performed well enough on it, we don't want you to repeat it anymore. We want to get it out of your way and advance you to the next level. And in the same way, once you've gotten through enough levels in an exercise, let's move that exercise out of the way and give you a new exercise to challenge you. All that's going on underneath the hood as a sort of programmed by our scientists and our designers. Yeah, 
Now, what I will say is that a lot of, through a lot of that explanation, I was saying the default setting, you know, the default setting, the default setting. Um, how can you go about changing the default setting? Is there a way to do that? And actually, Henry, I do want to toss this over to you. Um, I would love it if you could talk more about setting performance goals and uh, adjusting those trainer settings. Yeah, sure. Why don't you go over to the profile, if you don't mind? Absolutely. Now, I want to emphasize, as Stephanie does this, this is a purely optional activity. You do not have to customize your settings in any way. The default settings for the personal training provide a the default settings for the personal trainer provide a great experience for just about everyone. But in case you do want to mess around with what's under the hood, just to show you a little bit about it, there's two settings here that, that Stephanie's showing from your profile. The first is, is the training challenge. And what that says is, how many stars do you have to earn on an exercise in a single time that you're doing the level for Brain HQ to agree, hey, that's good enough we should get that level out of the way and bring a new level in. So by default, it's set to a medium level of challenge. And that means if you earn less than few stars, less than three stars, when you do a level, Brain HQ is going to bring that level back to you because it, want to get, it wants to get you to three-star performance. On the other hand, if you do that level and at any one time you do it, you get three or more stars, Brain HQ is going to say, hey, that's good enough. Your brain's doing great. Let's get that level out of the way and give you a new one. So three stars is a good level for most people. But if you're finding that you are kind of stuck on levels and you're finding it hard to progress, it's completely fine to lower that down to a two-star level on easy. You can do that yourself or you can always call or email our wonderful team with Stephanie and her colleagues. They'll take care of that for you if you want any help. <laughs> on the other hand, you know, let's say you're a very high-performance focused person, right? We work with NFL quarterbacks. We work with, uh, you know, United States military special forces operators. You know, for those kinds of people, three stars is maybe not good enough to go win the Super Bowl or not good enough to go out and, and do the world's most dangerous jobs in the military. And, you know, for them, we set that star performance level typically to hard, which is four stars. You can even set it to five stars, which is an expert level. But if you set it to five stars, you are definitely going to hit some levels you are going to do a lot in order to get to five star performance. So that's how that works. Again, I recommend leaving it on medium for most people. But if you want to mess around, that's how it works. The training depth setting, this is a slightly different topic. And as Stephanie mentioned, again, there's two dozen exercises in Brain HQ. And this tackles the question, when does the personal trainer retire an exercise for a while so it can introduce a new exercise? It only wants to give you about six exercises in a day to keep you focused. So by normal behavior, once you retire 10 levels in an exercise, it says, hey, that's enough of that exercise for a while. Let's get rid of it. Let's give you a new one. But maybe you want to move through the exercises more quickly. Well, in that case, you can click over to the left where it says breadth, and you can lower that number of levels that you have to retire before it introduces a new exercise. And that means you'll be in each exercise for fewer levels. You will get a grand tour of Brain HQ more promptly. But, you know, of course, there's a trade-off, and you sacrifice depth for breadth. If you move through the exercises more quickly, you're not going to go quite as deep into each exercise. Contrarywise, you can click on the depth uh, setting and you can turn the depth up very high. And if you do that, uh, Brain HQ will keep you in each exercise to finish more levels before it introduces a new exercise. And that might be nice if you really just want to focus and make sure you're just mastering each exercise before you go on. Again, I recommend you leave it at its default setting. That seems like it works quite well to have you finish 10 levels in an exercise before going into a next exercise. But, you know, just so you know what's going on underneath the hood here. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I do want to share uh, this other slide that I have uh, that shows sort of the uh, different levels for the breadth and depth slider. Um, so in the middle, like we said, the default is going to be 10. Uh, but if you move it more towards the breadth side, you can check, you can bring that down to uh, five repeats, two repeats, if you do it just once. And, you know, conversely, the depth, if you really, really, really want to get into a level and like really nail that proficiency with it, um, then it's you're going to be looking at 15, 20, 30, 100 repeats uh, before that level gets retired. Um, so it is definitely a very intensive way to do training if that is something that you are interested in doing. Um, all right, let's go back to this window here. 
Uh, the other thing that I wanted to say about the training challenge and training depth here is that if you do make any changes, uh, make sure you scroll down and click on the little save button. Otherwise, it'll just go back to whatever the previous settings were when you leave that page. Now, if we scroll up a little here uh, under the personal trainer settings, we also see there's something here called a focus. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on that. So a focus is a, a collection of exercises that have been picked out uh, generally by a group of scientists here at Posit Science or some of our collaborators that work on a, a specific skill set. So uh, standard focuses are going to be uh, what the personal trainer is picking out for you, but then below that are the specialized skill sets. Um, so if you, for example, want to uh, work on memory skills, you can click on one of these, like focus on memory. Uh, what it'll what it'll show you is sort of a background of the um, a background of the focus. It'll show you what kinds of exercises are included in that focus. It will uh, give you some info about the researchers who helped develop those exercises. And then when you click this button at the top, it'll go ahead and load that into your personal trainer. And so, so now we can see instead of those uh, blue and green exercises, those uh, attention and brain speed exercises, we have a bunch of pink icons indicating memory exercises. Um, so that is a, a wonderful feature if there is a specific thing that you want to work on within Brain HQ and not have to worry about still hand picking all of those levels. Uh, now, the other way you can go back and adjust your focus is by uh, clicking the focus option in the top right corner of the personal trainer page, or sorry, top, top left corner. Um, and there is one other uh, focus option at the bottom here that I do want to briefly touch on, and these are called custom focuses. So uh, sometimes there are going to be scenarios where uh, you want to train with, um, you know, a specific number of exercises or uh, you want to exclude a an exercise or two from the personal trainer lineup. Well, the way that you can do that and the way that we most often recommend is by uh, creating a custom focus to meet those needs. So what you can do is click on create a new focus. And right now it says, hey, you have that memory focus queued up. So we're going to go ahead and keep all the memory exercises there. But say I don't want to train with rhythm recall. So I click the little X. And I don't want to train with here, here. Maybe my auditory processing is doing okay. Uh, maybe I want to add a little bit more visual processing. So let's get some double decision in there. Let's do some eye for detail. Uh, and let's do some Hawkeye. So as I'm clicking each of those icons for each of those exercises, they're being added to the active set of exercises that the personal trainer is going to pull from. Now, uh, when I'm done creating this focus, uh, I can go ahead and rename it. I'm going to say this is my focus three. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to come up to the top and click this button to save it. And then it'll automatically get loaded into the personal trainer for me. Um, all right. Uh, Henry, did you have anything that you wanted to add about focuses or should we start jumping into Q&A? Well, the only thing I'll add very briefly is, um, hey, we have some number of people who use Brain HQ who, um, you know, are, are very hard of hearing or potentially even fully deaf. And hey, if you're a little bit hard of hearing, we recommend you just do Brain HQ normally with your hearing aids. But if you're hard of hearing enough that the auditory exercises are a substantial problem, or if you're just fully deaf, this is exactly what a focus is for. You can pick the visual training exercise focus. You're only going to get visual exercises. Go ahead and train your brain, build that brain health, and, and don't worry about hitting an exercise that you can't hear. Uh, on the other side of it, um, hey, maybe you have um, very substantial visual problems, right? My, my grandmother had macular degeneration, for example. It's very hard for her to see. Was it in the center of her visual field? Um, we have brain HQ users who are who are fully blind. Um, and actually, Brain HQ can be used uh, with just the auditory exercises, and they are completely usable with keyboard navigation and the voiceover support that's built into browsers. And um, you can go about Brain HQ even if you have uh, challenges to your visual system and, and it doesn't make sense for you to do the visual exercises. So focus is a nice way to, to make Brain HQ really work for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to load the regular uh, focus into my personal trainer here, and let's start looking at some questions that we can answer for folks. Oh, I see we have all a lot right. of questions flying in already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyla asks, uh, why are there exercises that never come up in the personal trainer? Um, so Kyla, that is a wonderful question. Thank you so much for asking. 
Um, without taking a look at your account, it's hard to say the specifics, but my assumption for most people is that uh, the exercises will eventually come up in the personal trainer um, for you, but uh, it may be that your um, breadth or depth setting might be set to depth. It might be that your uh, training uh, difficulty or uh, performance target is maybe set to harder expert. Something might be slowing down the rotation of exercises. So you might be seeing a lot of the same exercises repeatedly in your personal trainer lineup. Yeah, that's exactly right. As, as Stephanie said, um, you know, the personal trainer, it, it sees all 29 exercises, but it only it wants to kind of give you no more than six at a time, because if you spread yourself too thin, you're probably not really training your brain hard enough to really benefit. It will eventually get to all of those exercises without a doubt. Uh, and as Stephanie said, if uh, if you want to rotate them more quickly, you can change that breadth setting. You can also change your focus so that you move into other exercises that you might like to see in your personal trainer. Great question. Great question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. Gary has an interesting question. Uh, and Henry, I might toss this one to you. But Gary's asking, why don't my star scores always match the number of correct responses? Sometimes I get two stars for the same number of correct answers as when I get four stars. Oh. Um, yeah, okay. that probably uh, goes more into what we'll probably cover more in the progress webinar in about two months. Uh, but still happy to answer that. Uh, Henry, you want to take a crack at that? Yeah, the um, it's a great question. Uh, so as you do Brain HQ, as as you know, you're know you're going to get some right and you're going to get some wrong, uh, and that's true for everyone. It's true for Navy SEALs who do Brain HQ, and it's true for me, and it's true for my mom as we all do Brain HQ. The number of stars you get at the end represents your peak performance. So if you notice that challenge meter at the top as you're doing Brain HQ exercises, you know as you as you get trials right and they get harder, you earn more stars you might notice that you never lose a star, right? If you go on a winning streak and it gets really hard, and then you go on a little bit of a losing streak and it gets easier, we don't actually take any stars away from you. So if your best performance in the exercise was four stars, that's the number of stars you'll see at the end. And that might mean that, hey, you have one day when you do a level and uh, you, know, you get up to a very high level and you stay there to get four stars. You get a lot of them right. You might have another day where you kind of peak at four stars and get a lot of them wrong just because your attention wanders or what have you. Both of those levels are going to show up as four stars to you, even though, of course, you know, and, and Brain HQ knows as well, that your underlying average performance was not quite as good. So, um, but uh, but I hope that helps. So stars represent your peak performance. Um, the Brain HQ personal trainer does look a little bit deeper sometimes and will bring you back to a level where it thinks your average performance should improve. Great question. Yeah, fantastic. Um, all right. So Martha has a question, and I'll, I'll go ahead and read it out loud, and I want to see your sort of interpretation of the question and whether it might be different than mine. Yeah. Uh, but Martha asks, if I pick my if I pick up my own exercises, how can I check uh, if I answer correctly? Um, so I, as I'm interpreting that, that sounds like when you were training in the exercise or training with a level specifically, um, but basically how to like check your progress, uh, using maybe the challenge meter at the top of the window is, is that sort of your interpretation maybe? Well, I think there's two ways we could answer this and we'll, we'll try them both. So, uh, you know, Stephanie, as you say, uh, one thing that a person can do, and, and maybe it's worth diving into an exercise hill real quickly, um, something that would be straightforward to do visual sweeps. If you feel like you're feeling sharp today, I'm feeling extra sharp. So let's do some right. target tracker. Oh, target tracker is great. Why don't you do it? And I'll offer some comments as we go. So as you see Stephanie do target tracker, you know, she can track if she's getting them correct uh, or incorrect because as she finishes each uh, each turn, which she'll do right now, if she gets it right, you know, she's going to get, if you look at the top, she gets that kind of green arrow that appears and she's earned a star. And if she gets another one right, which uh, which I bet she'll do if I don't distract her too much. No, it's just adding to the challenge here. It's okay. <laughs> See, she gets another uh, green arrow that's appeared. And, um, and let's get one more right if we think we can pull that off. I think that should be doable. Okay. Might be speaking too soon, but let's see. So she hey, gets there we go. third green arrow and then kind of goes up. Uh, and now she's, of course, have to track four objects. And it's easy to see if you get one wrong as well. Stephanie, we'll ask you to get one wrong here if you don't mind indulging me. Uh, sure. Great. 
get that little thunk and you get a red arrow that's appeared. And in target tracker, if you get two wrong in a row, you're going to get two red arrows here because Stephanie will get this one wrong. I'm sure she could do it, but my request, the second red arrow appears and then it gets a little bit easier back down. So that's how in an individual exercise you can track, hey, am I getting these mostly right or am I getting these mostly wrong? But Stephanie, I, I thought she might also be asking about, um, uh, uh, well, maybe that actually is exactly the question. Martha, I hope that's the right question. If we got it right, let us know. If we didn't, ask us a follow-up. Yeah, please do. <laughs> um, also, thank you for that little bit of uh, target tracker training. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, we had a couple of people asking about the difference between uh, training on the web or training on an iPad. Um, you know, the the size of the screen can sometimes make a difference. And then uh, the uh, graphics, although very similar, are maybe just a little bit different. Uh, Henry, can you sort of speak to, um, you know, what is a better option for people when training with Brain HQ? Well, I, I think the best way to train on Brain HQ is the way that helps you train the most on Brain HQ. And if what that means is you're pulling out your phone while you're, uh, you know, riding on the bus or waiting in line to, you know, to, to pick up a friend, um, that's a great way to train on Brain HQ. And if you're the kind of person who likes to sit down in front of your computer and really focus, that's a great way to train on Brain HQ. Uh, again, I really, I really think the best way is the way that's right and best for you. I did see one person, uh, Lamar, ask, um, hey, is the personal trainer different on the iPad? And, you know, the layout is a little bit different just because the screen's a bit of a different size. But you will see all of the feedback. Um, you know, I think the question that was asked is, hey, I don't see the three tries, et cetera. Uh, you know, that should be appearing on your iPad. When you finish a level, it should give you, again, similar kind of feedback. The stars will fall down from the sky and show you how many stars you earned on each level. And it will tell you uh, how many you have to go. Uh, if you're not seeing that, send us a note to support at brainhq.com and we'll see if we can take a look at what you're doing and um, and help sort that out. Uh, but the experience is really, really quite comparable uh, between the uh, mobile applications on the iPad, for example, and the web. Uh, but if you need help, reach out to us at support at brainhq.com. We want to make sure we see what you see and, uh, and get anything sorted out. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. I see someone who asked an interesting question, which is, hey, what if you don't want an exercise to be retired, right? What if you've been training on Hawkeye and uh, the personal trainer is ready to retire it, but you'd like to keep going? I think the best thing to do, Stephanie, is to go pick out individual exercises at that point. You can keep using the personal trainer to keep moving through the content. But if you have a favorite exercise, you can click on Explore All Exercises, as Stephanie just did. And if you want to do more Hawkeye, you can click on Hawkeye, and it will take you to the Hawkeye screen where you'll be able to just... Uh, pick individual levels uh, that you want to repeat, pick individual levels you'd like to try for the first time. And if you just love a certain exercise, that's a great way to do it. My favorite exercise is eye for detail. So when the personal trainer kind of retired that for me, I don't, you know, I don't have to listen to that necessarily. I just came to the eye for detail exercise screen and kept on trucking. So great question. All right, let's see is there ever, April is asking, is there ever a time when Brain HQ says you're done? Um, you know, I hope not, as I'd like to keep it as I age. And also, second question, are new exercises ever created for Brain HQ? Yeah, so uh, the, answer the first, oh, go ahead. Do you want to answer the first question, Stephanie? I can oh, take yeah, one. I was going to say uh, to uh, answer the first question, whether Brain HQ ever just kind of says you're done. Um, no, not really. There's always, <laughs> there's always more opportunity for training. Uh, I have talked to a couple of uh, super users who have gone through and done all of the training and gotten four or five stars on all the levels. And uh, even they are still like, hey, what can I do to like continue training? I want to keep doing this as like booster training to keep myself sharp, even if I'm not training quite as regularly anymore. Um, so Brain HQ uh, is uh, as done as you want it to be, I think. Uh, but Henry, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, in that sense, it's like going to the gym, right? You know, they're never yeah. going to tell you you've done all the swimming you need to do. You don't need to get in the pool anymore, right? You can always swim a little bit further, a little bit faster. And that's how Brain HQ works. And in particular, the personal trainer, it will keep bringing you back to the exercises where it thinks you need to, to boost yourself up on. 
With regard to building new exercises, uh, there's always, uh, in, you know, there's 29 exercises, there's hundreds of brain training levels, people don't run out, but there's definitely more we could do over time in brain health. And, and this is a topic of interest in our in our R&D team. Uh, we don't have anything to announce at this time, but, uh, but uh, there's always an interest in doing more to help improve brain health. Great question, thanks. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. All right, I'm seeing a lot of great questions and I'm trying to like very quickly skim them so that way I can sort of summarize them or pick a question that answers a, a lot of similar questions. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll comment in one or two if you're looking at sure. things. You know, I see someone, Kyla, asking about uh, freeze frame in particular, how are the stars assigned? And uh, freeze frame is a bit of an unusual exercise. You know, it is what we call a sustained attention training exercise. And what that means is it's really exercising your ability to, to stay focused for long periods of time. And what that means is each level in freeze frame can be quite long. You know, they're designed to take five or 10 or even 12 minutes at some times. Uh, and uh, one thing about freeze frame is that it does not normally appear in the personal trainer. Um, because it does take quite long in that way. And we don't want someone to sit down for a quick personal trainer session and find out it's given them freeze frame and they're there for 12 minutes, as the case may be. So you're only going to find freeze frame in more specialized uh, focuses uh, or as an individual exercise you might be picking. And I think the question sort of related to, hey, how many stars people earn? And, you know, freeze frame is an exercise where, you know, people can get to five stars with uh, with a certain amount of work. So if you're doing quite well on freeze frame, fantastic, means that you're training your attention and your ability to stay focused in a sustained way. Uh, and a great way to do that is to work your way through the, uh, the, the levels in the individual exercise by picking explore all exercises and then picking out freeze frame from that basis. Great question. Thanks. Um, so we have a lot of questions that are pertaining to progress, uh, which is going to be a separate webinar that we are going to be running uh, in about two months time. Um, but uh, since so many people are asking about it, I think it would be okay for us to just sort of briefly touch on it. So to access your progress from the web, you would click on the progress tab up here. And you're going to have a breakdown of sort of uh, different metrics here. So you're going to see how many days you've trained, how many stars you've earned, how many levels you've completed, and what your percentile is. Uh, and it's your percentile, uh, unless otherwise noted, is going to be age adjusted. Uh, so you are being compared to uh, other Brain HQ users that were born the same year as you. Um, so the way that we uh, often like to uh, direct people towards training sometimes, if maybe the personal trainer uh, needs to take a little backseat and you want to know what sort of levels you want to work on, uh, you can take a look at uh, stars earned and you have this little graph here. Um, each of these little circles represents a level that I've completed uh, within Brain HQ. And the bigger the circle, the more stars I've earned. So sometimes what people will like to do if they want to earn more stars is they will look for levels that they haven't completed or levels that have smaller circles. Uh, and they'll click on that. And then that will go ahead and uh, load up that specific level for them so that way they can train with it. Um, there is a similar feature within the levels complete map. Um, the darker the color, the uh, more stars you have earned for that particular level. So people uh, will see, hey, you know, I've got kind of a light uh, color here. So that means that maybe I didn't uh, complete it all that often. Let me go back and train with it a couple more times. Um, so I, I know we had a couple of questions about stars and levels listed there. Uh, so hopefully that uh, sort of touches on that briefly. Um, but again, we are going to be running a progress specific webinar in about two months. Uh, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for an email invitation to that. And Stephanie, while you're on that topic, I see a couple of people mentioning this, so I'll, I'll answer it as well. The screens that Stephanie just showed, that stars earn screen and that levels complete screen, those are available on the web, but if you're training only on your mobile phone, you're not going to see those screens. Uh, and that's mainly because, uh, you know, if you look at that map that Stephanie just showed with all those dots, uh, to be honest, that's just something that doesn't fit on a mobile phone. Um, but we are looking at ways to bring this information in a helpful and compelling way onto mobile devices in the future. But if you're looking to track your progress on your phone, you go back to the Brain HQ uh, topic there at the top. 
you know, what you'll see on your on the web and on the phone is you'll see these badges that appear on the top of the screen that will convey much of the same information, how many levels you've completed and how much training you've done and so forth. And that's the right way to track your progress on a phone or a tablet. And again, we'll talk about that more in the progress and um, uh, the progress webinar in a few months. So, but just wanted to call out that difference between um, uh, between uh, the mobile phone and uh, and the web version of Brain HQ. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, Mary asks, how do I know when a trainer is retiring a level? So uh, do you happen to have that image on your PowerPoint of uh, what it looks like when you've passed a level? I don't know if we have that screenshot easily available. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> I have. Um, so once the animation is done, it'll say passed at, in the center of that circle. Yeah, that's past a repeated level. Yeah. If you go back to the previous one, does it tell you that you've passed a level uh, in a more ordinary way? Do you know, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, we may not have an image of it. Oh, past yeah. level right there is, I think, exactly what we're looking for here, Mary, which is right there in the center. You see it says you've passed the fourth level. And what that means is when you come back to the personal trainer the next time and it gives you a visual sweeps, it's actually going to advance you onto the fifth level at that point. So just keep an eye on what's in the in the middle of this circle as you complete each uh, exercise, and it's going to give you that guidance around what's coming next. That was a great call. Um, all right, let's see. I want to um, answer another question from Alex, if I might, real quick, and then Stephanie, sure. I'll take back to you. You know, Alex says, uh, hey, I'm using the Brain HQ through the personal trainer, but I don't really see what the use of a star is. Like, why, what are stars all about? Why is the personal trainer being driven by stars? And it's a great question, Alex. You know, we've talked about how you have to exceed a certain number of stars when you do one level in order to, in order to, to, um, have Brain HQ retire that level for you. We've talked about how it's going to keep you training on that level until you earn 10 stars total and move on. What are stars all about? Well, stars are sort of a, a summary uh, a summary score of, of, hey, you know, how was your performance on the exercise? You know, if you're getting one or two stars on the exercise, you know, it means I mean, you're doing okay and we're glad you're doing it. But Brain HQ in general thinks that with more training, you could do better. And if you're getting four or five stars on the exercise, well, you're really good at it. Fantastic. Probably we should give you something more useful to do with training your brain. So in that sense, stars are a reflection of your overall performance. They're the reflection of your opportunity to continue gaining by training. And so we show the star feedback so you know how you did. And then under the hood, Brain HQ is using those stars so it doesn't waste your time by giving you uh, exercises and levels that you're great at. And it uses your time productively by giving you exercises and levels that you have the opportunity to improve at. So that's why it's driven by stars underneath the hood, because they really are a measure of, of your performance on the exercise. Great question, Alex. Yeah. Um, we have a question from uh, somebody in the audience who is asking what the difference between the focus options optimized for you and optimized for you with the daily spark are. Um, so let me go ahead and pull those options up here. So we can see uh, up here, we click on the focus option and under the standard focuses, we have two options here. We have optimized schedule with daily spark and optimized schedule for you. Um, so the daily spark is an exercise that um, gets added to the beginning of your personal trainer schedule as sort of a uh, warm up if you are somebody who has full access to Brain HQ. Um, but for people who don't have full access to Brain HQ, the daily spark is a free exercise that you can train with just to get a sampling of the program. Um, so for people without a subscription to Brain HQ, optimized schedule with Daily Spark is going to be what the personal trainer is going to default to. Um, now, if you do have full access and you maybe don't want to mix up your schedule, you don't want to have that Daily Spark option thrown in at the beginning, uh, you can set that, you can set your focus to the optimized schedule for you, and it won't include that Daily Spark exercise at the beginning of your schedule. Fantastic. Uh, here's a whole bunch of good ones I'm seeing in a row here, Stephanie. Um, sure. Asks, hey, what program replaces Drive Sharp? And that's a great question, very near and dear to my heart, because uh, if you've been with us for a while, you probably know that there used to be a standalone program called Drive Sharp, focused very specifically on two exercises shown to be very related to improving driving safety. 
Um, that's an incredibly important topic to us. There's a huge amount of research done with Brain HQ exercises and driving safety. So if you want to do the modern version of DriveSharp, go ahead as Stephanie's doing and click on that focus on driving focus. And that's going to give you the two exercises that were in DriveSharp, which were double decision and target tracker. And you can do them and gain exactly those benefits around greater awareness of the visual world and as a result, safer driving. So wonderful question. Yeah. Uh, and I and see that was, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. Oh, and I was going to say the uh, DriveSharp program was based off of um, research from the active study. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, quite a lot of NIH funded studies, but certainly culminating in the active study. So, yeah. yeah. And I see Dave says a pretty interesting question about the personal trainer here. If I can't move beyond a certain level, like, hey, I'm doing an exercise like target tracker. I got three to four objects and I'm just, you know, that's that's the level that I can do. Will it eventually let me move on or is it just going to keep training me until maybe I get to five or six objects? It's a great question. So, you know, if, um, if you're uh, on an exercise like that, if you're getting three to four objects, but that's not quite enough stars for whatever reason, you're doing three to four objects, but let's say you're getting, you know, just two stars. It, it is going to bring you back to that level until you get to your, 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 your challenge requirements, which might be three stars. It will eventually get rid of that level. You know, if you, if you uh, try it for a number of days and can't quite get to your performance target, it will eventually retire that level anyway. But if you find that you're really stuck, uh, and it does happen, there's two things you can do. You can skip the exercise, as Stephanie showed you, or you can go into your profile. Do you mind going back to the profile and taking a look at that performance challenge level again? Sure. You know, if you're really stuck and you're, it just keeps bringing it back to the same time because it wants you to get to three stars and you're only at two stars, you know, you can just change that uh, training challenge from medium to easy. And then it'll let you get through the through the level. And then you can reset it to medium or hard at a later point, if you like. So you can just sort of temporarily lower the gate so you can advance past a level and then and then swap the gate back up when you're ready to. So great question. Great question. So many good questions here. Do you see some other ones I you know. want, to, Stephanie, or should I pick a few? Yeah, I am. I'm still seeing a lot of questions about progress and also some questions about hardware. Uh, you know, people have been asking about um, using BrainHQ with headphones and what are the benefits of that, particularly with the auditory exercises. Or um, I've seen a couple questions about, uh, you know, cursor speed for your mouse settings and whether that makes a difference when you are doing your training. Well, um, let's the headphones first, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, I think headphones are a great idea for doing the auditory exercises. They can just help you focus a little bit more on what you're doing. You know, even, even if they're not fancy noise canceling headphones, they can still just you know, keep a little bit of the sound out from daily life. They're not essential by any stretch of the imagination. So I typically use headphones when I'm training on my phone, just because I'm often out and about in the world and it helps me stay focused. But if I'm training on my laptop, I don't usually use headphones. I'm usually in a quiet room and that, and that, and that is good enough for me. Uh, and I think the other question was about mouse speed and so forth. And there was a, a related question to this as well about, um, hey, I'm just not fast enough to do these exercises. So most brain HQ exercises do not require you to give a fast response. So you might have seen, for example, Stephanie doing target tracker where she was clicking on the bubbles as they moved around. You know, they move around for a little bit on their own, but after that, you take as much time as you like to respond to them. You know, give it a good think. Make sure you like your answer. Even the exercises that seem like they're fast like Hawkeye, where you see the birds appear on the screen for a short period of time. The fast part is the fact that the birds appear on the screen for a short time. You can take as long as you like to respond. You can give a good long think about where you thought you saw that bird. Now, there are some exceptions. There are a set of exercises in Brain HQ called these continuous performance exercises. And a good example, do you mind showing this for just a second, uh, Stephanie? Why don't you pick like divided attention for, for example? And we won't talk a ton about how to do this exercise, but you know this is an exercise that you that you have to keep up with. Brain HQ is going to show you in this case these uh, these shapes and these colors at a certain pace, and you need to be you know using your keyboard typically to respond very quickly. Now these don't usually come up in someone's training schedule until quite late because they're very challenging exercises. They're not really appropriate for you if you're just starting Brain HQ. So if you don't like these, if they're not really right for you for whatever reason, 
no problem. You can email us. We'll make a custom schedule for you that takes them out. You can skip them if you don't feel like you're ready for them. That's all fine. You know, that's why we try to do a bunch of speed and attention training to kind of get your brain ready for some of these more uh, demanding and challenging exercises like this. So, uh, but all that is to say, you shouldn't need to feel like you need to move your mouse super quick or anything like that. And if you're doing an exercise and you feel like my mouse needs to move faster, hey, send us a note at supportedbrainhq.com because either, hey, you don't need to move your mouse that fast. You can take as long as you like to respond. Or if it's one of these exercises, probably the best answer is to use the keyboard. Every one of these exercises has keyboard shortcuts that can help you keep up with it as well. So great question. Yeah, uh, I was just about to note the the keyboard shortcuts there. So perfect answer for that. Yeah. Hey, I see one question here. I want to make sure we take. Marsha is asking, hey, I want to ask my blind, uh, I can ask on behalf of my blind friend, how can they get started? And, uh, you know, as I indicated, Mar uh, Marsha, we've done a ton of work to make sure that Brain HQ is very accessible, even by people who are going to be just using keyboard and the screen reader. Um, and you know, probably the best thing to do is to have your friend email us or call us. Uh, you can email us at support at brainhq.com. Stephanie, you probably know the phone number when you're ready to pass that out. And we can just schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching session and help. We'd be happy to do it, help your, help your friend get started in that front. Um, so we would love that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Henry, I think we have time for one more question before we start wrapping up. Is there another one that is, uh, speaking to you that you are eager to answer? <laughs> uh, maybe this is a detailed one, but I do want to hit on it. Pablo asks, why do I have five points instead of 10 to complete an exercise? And, and in particular, I think probably what that means is, Hey, why am I in the personal trainer and only asking me to get, uh, get five stars to complete this exercise rather than 10? Probably one possibility, Pablo, is you're in a research study. So if you're doing this because you're part of a university-based study, they can set up Brain HQ training in all kinds of fascinating ways. More likely what's happening is you have the focus that's called uh, an optimized schedule with the Daily Spark. And what the Daily Spark is, is it gives you an exercise at the beginning of your training schedule each day. It's kind of a warm-up exercise. And for that warm-up exercise, the first level that you do each day, it's only going to ask you to get to five stars because it's trying to be a warm-up level. And after you do that first level with the Daily Spark, the rest of your levels, it's going to ask you to earn a total of 10 stars. If you like that warm-up, fantastic. If you don't like that warm-up, Stephanie, do you mind going back to focus and showing how we uh -huh. can schedule without the Daily Spark? If you don't yep. want that warm-up, just pick optimize schedule for you without the Daily Spark, and it will just dive into your regular schedule without giving you a warm-up. It's purely optional depending on how you like to go about your brain training. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I think that's going to wrap it up here. I'm sorry that we didn't get a chance to answer more questions today, but uh, if you do have any pressing questions that we didn't have an opportunity to answer, uh, please shoot us an email. Uh, the best email address to reach us at is support at brainhq.com. Uh, me or anybody of my colleagues on the customer delight team are more than happy to take those questions. Um, all right. So once again, thank you all so much for attending today. Uh, this recording will be up on our YouTube channel in the coming days. Uh, that's going to be youtube.com slash brainhq. So feel free to subscribe there <laughs> to receive a notification when that video is up. Um, let me think. What else? Uh, Henry, thank you so much for joining and co-hosting and answering all those wonderful questions. Uh, it's always great doing webinars with you. Stephanie, thank you. Thanks so much for organizing it. Uh, there will be a recording, I think, that's eventually made available over the next few days. And uh, just keep an eye on our YouTube channel to see that. And um, hey, we love all the questions. Uh, we're sorry we didn't quite get to all of them. But if you uh, any anything that you want to make sure we answer, you can always email us at support at brainhq.com. Happy to, happy to take those follow-up questions. And what do we have coming next, Stephanie, for our next office hours? Our next office hours, I believe, is a deep dive into progress. So that'll be in two months from now in May. Okay, so in May, come to us with all those progress questions. We're gonna we're gonna hit on just about everyone we can. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming today. These are always a delight. Bye bye. All right.